What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the recap. Before we talk about hoops and talk about this crazy playoff picture and why the, the play-in is so very great because, I mean, look, look at us. We're talking about basketball right now. The last couple weeks of every NBA season is kind of a bore other than a few games every night. But right now, every single game has some type of significance, and it's amazing. But before we talk about that, I want to thank you for all the support. Obviously, Called Game um, was a big project of mine, and we're only two weeks in. But according to Spotify's charts, we have the number one – focusing on that. We have the number one sports podcast in the world right now. Taking out part of my take, who had been the number one sports podcast for as long as I have been checking the podcasting charts. So I want to thank you guys for downloading and listening to it and for watching on YouTube. And if you're doing both, you're the real MVP. Thank you for all the support. We did Meta Center for our test last episode, if you missed that. And the next Wednesday, not supposed to be telling you this, but I will anyway. I think we have Matt Barnes. I think Matt Barnes is the next episode and his boys. And I think that was a very great episode as well. So thank you for all the support, man. Keep it up. You know, let's keep trying to grow this thing. But now let's talk about basketball. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you and say that all of the games that, that – premiere today or were out today I watched because that'll be a ball face lie um the Bulls opened up to fans for the first time this season of course I had to be in attendance against the Boston Celtics on national tv the Bulls gotta win hear, hear me it, it ain't over I'm not saying the Bulls are back but statistically the Bulls are not out of the playoff picture just yet two game win streak I think honestly for the Bulls to be in the playoffs it's very unlikely we have to win every single game left of the season and that we need to watch the Wizards or the Pacers to drop multiple it's unlikely but it's possible we've seen crazier things happen in the NBA world so until then uh, go Bulls I had people hitting me up in my mentions saying uh thank you thank you um thank you Kenny because me as a Heat fan, me as a Hawks fan, we needed you to do this. And I'm like, bro, I didn't, I didn't do anything. I watched. I, I watched. And, and nothing better than a Bulls game. Like, the atmosphere is ridiculous. So, big win for the Bulls. Big loss for the Boston Celtics that drops them to the seventh seed. It was obviously disappointing. They were missing Jalen Brown. Uh, Robert Williams is a late game scratch. But still a game you don't want to lose against a team that's not very good on national TV. Jason Tatum really, really struggled. Kimball was great. But anyway, let's talk about... Talk about the Lakers. I actually did, had a conversation with J.J. Redick on his podcast about the play-in game because y'all know I've been so very pro play-in for the viewing experience as an NBA fan. I just talked about him at every single game matters with the last two weeks of the season. I, I can't explain how excited I am for it, but it was good to see the perspective of an NBA player because, of course, we heard LeBron, we heard Draymond, we heard Mark Cuban and Luka Doncic, but to sit down and actually have a conversation and ask questions and answer questions about the play-in uh, was amazing. So go watch J.J. Redick's podcast podcast because we, we talked about it pretty in depth but I want to talk about the Lakers oh my god Kenny you're just like ESPN you can't help but to talk about the Lakers I have to talk about the Lakers today because with their loss to the Portland Trailblazers now uh, they lose the season series against them 1-2 and well they no longer have the advantage or the tiebreaker against the Portland Trailblazers big time win for Damian Lillard and company man Big time win. And I want to talk about the Lakers here because right now they are the seventh seed. Of course, again, I always got to say this, a lot of season left, so they could be the five seed uh, potentially in just a couple games. That's possible. But I want to talk about if I was a Lakers fan, I'd be slightly worried. I've been seeing a lot of people. I have friends that are Lakers fans. They're like, bro, we chilling. We got the best player in the world. We're coming off a championship. Yes, we're a little banged up, but it's the Lakers and it's LeBron. We'll be good. We'll be in the finals. We're still the favorite. And I'm going to halt you just a little bit. Listen, talk about last year and, and when we, we were in Orlando. You have to admit, even if you're a Lakers fan, the Lakers had an easy path to the finals. Now, Lakers fans, that's not me telling you that your championship is less valuable because a championship is a championship. You can only play against the teams that are in front of you, and luckily for the Lakers, they went against teams in front of them that weren't amazing. The year, if this is going to be a year for a repeat for the Lakers, the path is going to be significantly harder. Starting off with the playing game, you have to go against probably the Warriors 7-8 matchup. The Warriors have Steph Curry, anything can happen. And then if you lose that, you have one more game. So at the max, you have two games before you even get into the actual playoffs. And then if you get there, you have to go against one of the best teams in the Western Conference. Now, you can have an argument all day about if the Jazz or if the Suns are actually who we think they are, have they played in the regular season. Regardless, even if you still think the Lakers are better than those two teams, it's not like you got going there and just going to be like, oh, we're going to beat them in four. We're going to beat them in five. More than likely, these teams are putting up fights, especially since you are so banged up. LeBron said it himself. He's not going to be 100%. And people were having a conversation of if LeBron was just talking to talk and trying to make himself an underdog. But I legitimately don't think think LeBron is going to be 100% for this playoff run. Anthony Davis is always banged up. 
turned ankle, back spasms, poked in the eye. The man can't catch a break with his injuries. And then your starting point guard, who had been so great for you, is in health and safety protocol. He'll be back right before the play-in. We don't know how that's going to take a toll on his body. These are all the little things, the little variables that I would be worried about. And then you throw that on having to go against one of the top two teams in the Western Conference. Sure, let's say you get out of that series. Boom, you get hit in the face with whoever the winner of the 4-5 is. And boom, you're going to get, like, you're going to have to go get somebody in the Eastern Conference, too, if you're going to win that championship. This is going to be the most grinded out championship imaginable if you believe the Lakers are still the team. And it's hard for me to say that they are, but it's also hard for me to say that they're not because they got, they're going to have LeBron. <laughs> they're going to have LeBron. But I want to go, I want to transition from the Lakers talk to the bottom of this conference because, wow, um, the worst thing that could happen from an NBA fan that's in love with this playing idea, in love with all these games mattering, is um, Zion is out. And he's out for pretty much the rest of the season. Uh, it, that's such a heartbreaker because I'm not saying that they were starting to hit their stride. They were being average, but the Spurs were being so bad <laughs> that it opened up the door for the Pels. It even opened up the door for the Sacramento Kings, who ain't done anything in a decade. And I was I was asking my friends this. If the Sacramento Kings ended up still in the 10th seed, it's still unlikely right now because even after today's – they lost today – um, they are three and a half games out with like six games left. It's unlikely. It's possible, but unlikely. Will we say the streak is over? Because technically they're the 10th seed and they're more than likely going to get eliminated as a 10th seed. You know what I'm saying? Or does the playoff streak for the Sacramento Kings don't end until you're actually in a seven-game series? I would say that. But I can see this, man, if you're a Kings fan, you make the 10th seed, you better wear that like a badge, you know what I'm saying? Um, but the Spurs being so bad, luckily they got a win today, and it was down to the wire, they, they put it out. Them being so bad had opened the door for the Pelicans, it had opened the door for the Kings, and now that Zion is out, it's hard for me to get excited about the Pelicans potentially stealing that, because now they're missing their all-star, they're missing their best player, they're missing their superstar. And I see today they had a close game against the 76ers, I don't know what happened in that game, but they didn't. Pull it out. And I can't see them taking that spot and keeping that spot and making it super interesting. I know Adam Silver would have loved to see Zion in a one-game elimination against whoever. Oh, it was going to end up against John ja Morant. <laughs> one versus two. And then the winner of that goes against the loser of Steph Curry and and LeBron. It, it was about to be perfect for Adam Silver, but it, it won't be. The Spurs have the hardest schedule left of the season, and it's not even close. They go against the Portland Trailblazers. The Bucks, the Nets, the Knicks, Phoenix, and Phoenix. What? They'll mess around and potentially lose every single game here. And then what? That opens up the door for whoever is in that 11. And and and, and I don't trust the Pelicans without Zion. I don't trust the Kings because they don't have De'Aaron. And they don't have Tyrese, who's out for the rest of the season, even though they just was like on a four-game win. I don't trust any of those things. I just wish that if we were healthy, um, the Pelicans could potentially steal that. But not only just that, the Grizzlies are sliding too, man. They're losing games that they shouldn't lose. So everything matters at this point, bro. Every single thing matters. And it's amazing. With the Bucks win today, technically – they are the two seed because they just beat Brooklyn two times in a row. They took the tiebreakers against Brooklyn, so they're the two seed. Now, this is something I've always wondered when it comes to being one of the top teams in the league, especially this year where nothing is easy. What seed would you think or path would you think is the easiest? Would it be easier to be the two seed? Would it be easier to be the three seed? Do you trust Philly enough to be like a dominant one seed? It's so many questions, and that's why the season is amazing. Tomorrow's slate of games. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the playoff implications of tomorrow's slate of games. So we have Washington versus Indiana again. Again, this is probably going to end up end up being a play-in game. Um, the 76ers get a layup against Detroit, even though Detroit just won their last game, so maybe it's not a layup. The Raptors versus the Grizzlies. Oh, my God. The Grizzlies better hope the Raptors are continuing their tank because I don't care what you tell me. The Raptors are on tank mode. Cal Lowry is not playing, uh, and they just don't look good. So it makes sense for them to be like, you know, we're going to chill. We got a core. Pascal's still really good. OG's still really good. Fred Van Vliet is really good. We have a core. Let's try to get the first overall pick by uh, increasing those odds by losing. So Memphis better hope that they don't play their guys. Nets versus Nuggets is tomorrow. Now, the Nuggets come be on the back-to-back after losing against the Jazz today, but that is a game right there. I, I mean, it does have some playoff implications because the Nuggets and the Clippers are still trying to fight for who's going to be that three-seed out west, so it does matter. And then, of course, the Nets probably want to be the two-seed. Rockets versus Jazz don't really matter unless – I mean, it does matter because the Jazz is still trying to take the one. Every Like, again, every game matters to some extent. So beautiful. So beautiful. So, Lakers fans, talk to me. Talk to me, Lakers fans.
And everybody else, thank you so much for watching. Go watch Call Game. I appreciate you. Peace.